This review was made possible by the Yojo Outlet Center, specializing in vintage G.I. Joe toys and parts. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Foreign BX57, here to be you in our 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the G.I. Joe's Mortar Man, the 1989 Downtown. Now Downtown doesn't make any comic book appearances, but he makes his first cartoon appearance in the Deke Animated 1989 five part miniseries Operation Dragonfire in Part 5. Downtown here comes with the following accessories. He has a removable helmet. He also has a pistol, a revolver in fact. I think this is the first time we're getting a such a modern looking revolver, in fact. Um, many other revolvers in the G.I. Joe series have been kind of western themed. But this thing looks a bit more modern. He also has a very, very large backpack. Which has six removable mortar shells. The shells themselves have almost a dumbbell peg here. It's actually fairly interesting that uh, the sculpt of the backpack has three water canteens on the side there. And last but not least, we have the mortar itself. Now the mortar is actually a three-piece device here with a barrel which moves on this top piece here, which is, I guess, the sighting and adjustment portion, as well as a tripod. So they're all removable. The barrel itself has a handle as well as a little o-ring to uh, attach to the sighting and adjustment portion. It is unfortunately not hollow so you can't put the shells in there. That's rather an unfortunate oversight but oh well we won't get a hollow um, mortar until we get to the 1990 Sub-Zero unfortunately. Has a nice little sighting reticle there. And a, I guess this portion is an adjustment knob, so you can have them swivel it around. And we have a very unusual tripod here. It took me a while to figure out exactly how to um, balance the, the uh, mortar on here, because obviously the, the mortar has to have a bit of an angle. Mortars are generally not just like straightforward. They're usually on an angle so the shell you know, flies off in an arc. And it has two of these bent legs back here and one straight leg. So I'm assuming that the straight leg is is forward and the bent legs um, hold most of the weight. Another very interesting thing about the tripod very unfortunate thing, but realistic, is the fact that the feet have these little notches in them. Now, realistic um, tripods, well, not only just for uh, mortars, but other military things, uh, they generally have little claws so they dig into the ground. Unfortunately, this isn't very good for the toy because it actually makes this thing a little bit unstable because the feet aren't flat. So it just adds to the bit of an inst instability when you're trying to pose this thing and it just kind of flops over. I may be wrong, so if I am, please correct me in the comments, but I don't believe that this is based on any real world mortar. I just couldn't find anything that looks anything like this very distinctive 
bulbous backed mortar barrel or the way that any of these things uh, connect together it looks like something that while it looks practical and looks realistic I, it just it just doesn't look like anything uh, any visual example of any mortar that I've ever seen again like I said I could be wrong and I could be just missing something rather obvious one very interesting thing about this is that in the design phase the mortar looked absolutely nothing like this which is very unusual because when you have a, a guy who's a specialty usually they design the special weapon fairly early in the design process but if you take a look at Dave Dorman's original sketch for Hasbro it doesn't look like anything like this to me downtown's design raises a lot of questions which I'm kind of hoping you as viewers could help me out with because I just don't get it. Now, one thing is, in his file card, it m kind of mentions that he played high school basketball, and yet there are references to baseball in here as well. So I'm kind of thinking that there's a, a, a sports theme, or at least a subtle sports theme going on with this figure that I'm just not catching on to. I mean, his shin, his shin guards look like something from baseball okay but I I'm not sure about the helmet the helmet is rather big unfortunately it's it's made of a very pliable material so it's kind of thick and it's probably a bit more bulbous than I think the design originally intended it for it to be but if you think of those hard baseball helmets which have that little thing which goes around and covers like the ear I think that's maybe what they were going for here I'm not I'm not really sure I'm not seeing any other influences here though the color scheme is also a very very odd choice you have this bright red brown pants this green bar around the bottom of his shirt and the shirt color itself now I'm not really sure if this is coming out on camera or not because sometimes when I take photographs of this it, it becomes like a bright blue but it's more like a greenish blue, a type of teal. It's not exactly my favorite color. I'm not sure if that was meant to represent team colors or something from either a baseball team or a basketball team. I'm not sure. Again, Hasbro has done that in the past, but I just couldn't find any reference to those type of colors. It, it's, it's too odd of a choice. For like a military mortar man so I'm, I'm thinking that there has to be some type of reference as to what these colors are actually supposed to mean here uh, as far as detail goes he's really well done the shin guards even though they look like they're from like um, baseball I don't really mind them because I mean you know they're shin guards they're protective gear which should be on uh, a soldier sure I get that and the brown pants themselves, well, yeah, okay, they're they're military as well. They're they're sort of desert colored, even if they are a little bit dark. It's something that we have seen on GI Joes, like 1984 Roadblock, for instance. He had pants that are a very similar hue to this, and he has a lot of nice straps and harnesses. I mean, he had this gigantic backpack. <laughs> when you think about the three water canteens. And six mortar shells, which would probably weigh about, I don't know, 10 pounds each. This guy's carrying a ton of weight on him. So, of course, he has a ton of uh, straps and whatnot just to uh, help aid him, you know, in standing upright uh, when he's carrying that sort of thing. One unfortunate thing I did notice with the um, figure's paint, however, is that they did miss a few spots. I'm pretty sure this portion right in between... His neck there should have been painted something, either an undershirt color or maybe like the flesh tone color. They had it they had flesh toned on his hands, so I don't know why they they skipped out on that. As well as on his back, you can see that there there are these um, U clips to hold the straps on them. They're not painted silver like they are on the front, so they they missed out a few paint ops, probably just for budgetary reasons. That's rather unfortunate, but there it is. He does have a very interesting little U.S. emblem buckle there. 
I'm pretty sure that that's more like a Civil War type thing rather than a modern uh, era uniform thing. But uh, if, again, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And also one very interesting thing about the figure is, well, actually his hands. In some cases, uh, his hands are far more um, Caucasian flesh tone rather than the yellow. Like mine are kind of yellow here. Now at first I thought that maybe it's just the flesh tone paint has just aged very badly and yellowed over time, but the rest of the the rest of the um, the plastic seems to be fairly okay. So I'm not really seeing any any age deterioration on the rest of the figure, just the hands. But a lot of collectors do tend to think of this as either a variation or just an error at the factory. Because the Caucasian flesh tone color paint itself is a combination of different colors of paint. Yellow being one of those uh, parts. So maybe they just put too much yellow in on, certain, on a certain run of figures. So that they look like he's wearing yellow gloves rather than just having his hands exposed. While there have been some play sets which feature the mortar, like the 1984 mortar defense unit, as well as the 1985 Ford Observer unit, which had a massive mortar. Downtown here is actually a relative rarity among the specialties of G.I. Joe. He takes over for the 1982 through 84 Short Fuse, who is the team's original mortar man. As a matter of fact, with this blonde hair, you might actually think that downtown may have started off life as a new version of Short Fuse. 1989 was a year which uh, brought back a lot of um, classic characters and updated them. So this was kind of a missed opportunity. While Downtown was the last mortar man for the vintage G.I. Joe run, there was one other figure which had a mortar. And that was the 1990 Sub-Zero. Now Sub-Zero himself was not a mortar man at all. He was a winter operations specialist and came with some heavy artillery and a heavy machine gun. So just who would the opposite number for downtown the mortar man be on the Cobra side? Well I can really only think of one other Cobra which actually has a mortar and that is the 1990 Range Viper. Came with a very small handheld tube and a very odd looking shell. And the only reason why I even call this thing a mortar is because it says so on the contents list of his card. If you're looking for a downtown figure on the aftermarket, you should be able to find one fairly easily and fairly cheaply as well. Even with all of his accessories. He is really not a very popular figure on the aftermarket. Most likely due to his very odd color scheme and his bulbous helmet. Now... Personally, I think he's a fairly well-equipped figure. I love his accessories. And to be honest, the sculpt isn't all that bad either. He just needs, well, a better paint job, or at least a better paint scheme. The turquoise, brown, and red, they just don't go very well together. It looks a bit sickly.
Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.